<laughs> guys, did you guys miss our Friday night live stream? Comics and beer every Friday, 10 p.m. Eastern? I hope not, because it was a lot of fun. It was so much fun. And guys, it was the end of the month giveaway. That's right, we do giveaways at the end of every single month. We do. And every month we try to reach out to a different creator to help us in our giveaway. And this month we partner with the amazing, the spectacular, the great Greg Rucka. That's right, Greg Rucka. And what book is he writing right now? Lois Lane. Lois Lane. And guys, we uh, reached out to him and asked him to just partner with us and help make the giveaway that much more special by answering a few questions. And we also asked him if we could send him some Lois Lane books for, to sign and send back to us. But he did something a little more special. He was very generous in the gifts that he sent us to give away to our wonderful subscribers. It was amazing. He sent 10 issues of Lois Lane, one through 10, all signed, a trade paperback of The Old Guard, volume one, signed, and the hardcover trade paperback of Lazarus, signed. We were able to give that away. The Spider Woman? Oh yeah, and there was a Bat Woman. Bat Woman. That's Bat Woman. Um, a comic book in there as well as a special edition, number one. It was just absolutely awesome, his generosity to the channel. But that wasn't the cool part that we're here to talk about today. No, we are here to, talk, to show you guys the questions and the answers he gave us. And why are we doing that, babe? Because they were so interesting, so knowledgeable, so remarkable <laughs> that we wanted to share them with you, to have on our channel for you guys to go back and watch over and over again and enjoy them like we did. Yeah, we don't wanna, we showed it to everyone on our live stream on Friday and everyone was like, wow, this is like so cool. And it really was like, when I first watched these questions with Stephanie, um, when Greg sent them to us, I was like talking back to the questions cause I was just, I don't know, I read Lois Lane. I think Lois Lane is amazing. Stephanie read Lois Lane, she enjoyed it. And just the answers that he gave were so thoughtful and so in depth that it gave us so much more insight to the process at DC of making Lois Lane. Uh, there's just so much good stuff and so much information that we wanted to share that with you guys. And that's what we're gonna do right now? I think right now. Right now. So we're No gonna, more waiting. No more waiting. Uh, so yeah, we're gonna show those to you right guys right now. There's five questions and five answers. Um, stick, through, stick around to the end because we'll have a little wrap up at the end. So yeah, we'll see you guys on the other side. All right, see you then. Hi, uh, this is Greg Rucka, and I am answering via video uh, questions that Bruce and Stephanie sent me uh, to support the giveaway. So uh, I will try not to be long-winded and somewhat entertaining, but um, this is what you get. I am recording this from my, uh, I was going to say beautiful, but it's not, uh, cluttered and fairly messy office. Uh, today is uh, Monday the film length of uh june uh, it's the 22nd yeah um and it's a sad state of uh, self-isolation affairs that i have to say that so question number one was did i pitch dc uh about writing lois lane or uh, did dc approach me there is a long answer to that the long answer to that is Mike Perkins and I had talked about for uh, over a year, year and a half, doing a book that we wanted to call The Planet, that was sort of the spiritual inheritor of Gotham Central. It was going to follow journalism in the DC universe. And at the heart of it was going to be Lois and the staff at the Daily Planet. And we were going to introduce and create some new characters, and we we're going to talk about what it meant to try to be a reporter in the DC universe in the same way that Gotham Central was about what is it like trying to be a good cop in the city where Batman works. And then Brian Bendis got on Superman and he approached me and uh, Matt Fraction <clears throat> and DC and said, ooh, 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 uh, Matt should do Jimmy and Greg should do Lois and all of these things will happen together. And... DC liked the sound of that a lot more than they liked the idea of a potentially low-selling, risky isk book about reporters in the DC universe. So the, the, the answer to the question is yes, both. Um, Mike and I had a plan, and then DC came along and said, uh, that's all sweet and well and good, but we'd prefer you to do this. Uh, and we said, so if we do this, can we do the other thing? And they said, no, you do this, and that's it. So it made the decision for us. Question two is, uh, 
was this always meant to be a story about a team of women uh, or did that idea come to us after we started the project, after I started writing? Um, <clears throat> if you read the Lois Lane series, <clears throat> it, it, it both remains true to itself from start to finish, but it also changes slightly about halfway through. Um, some of the things that we had started off intending to do, we just couldn't bring to pass because other things were going on in the DC universe. Uh, and when the series was originally conceived, it was actually conceived as an ongoing. And uh, Mike and I had completed the first issue, and I think the second uh, before we were informed, no, it's actually a 12-issue maxi. So that required sort of rethinking what I was doing with the overall narrative. Um, and then that ties to the fact that I knew from the start, <clears throat> pardon me, I knew from the start, and, and, and Mike and I were on the same page about this, that this was primarily a character study uh, about Lois Lane. It was, it was an attempt in one way to say, this is what it's like to be Lois Lane. Um, and this is why Lois Lane is wonderful and amazing, and people should think she is an awesome character. And we're going to try to uh, illuminate that. We also knew at the start that we would be using Renee. Um, and that we would be using Renee as Renee question. Uh, and that meant that certain questions were going to... Wow, that's a lot of use of questions. The question meant that other questions would have to be answered. So that then led to trying to provide those answers. And that naturally led to the introduction of Jessica and Sister Clarice. And then all of a sudden, oh, look, I'm writing about a whole bunch of ladies. So when it came time to introduce the kiss of death, that was just a no brainer. Uh, it was, well, well, we got a thing going here. We're going to roll with it. So uh, that may not be the most satisfying answer, but that's what you get. Question three is, uh, do I have more ideas about Lois Lane stories and, uh, and, and the team of irregulars she has assembled, or is that it for now? The answer is, uh, man, there's a whole series that can come out of issue 12. Uh, and were DC to want to do that series, uh, I would be very interested in writing it. And if Perks wanted to draw it, I would be very interested in having Mike draw it. Uh, but for the time being, that's that's it. Um, interestingly, and you know, take this for what it's worth, one of the things you try to do when you're playing in a sandbox like the DC Universe is you want to put things in. You don't want to take things out. You don't want to remove. So if you are adding potential, ideally, you are always adding room for more stories. There's always more to do and, 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 and more stories to tell. So I very rarely get to the end of a run on any book and go, well, that's it. I'm out. Um, the act of traveling with these characters almost always begs the question of, well, what next? What more can we do? So there is more to tell, but for the time being, I think I've told it. So question four, I'm just going to read. Having written about the relationship between Lois and Superman, what do you think is their favorite getaway place to go? And what do you think is one thing that annoys Lois about dating Superman? Well, uh, she ain't dating him. She married him. They're married. Um, so let's be clear on that. Uh, they have been married in continuity for longer than they weren't. So if that is a problem for you, you have long since passed the statute of limitations on that. It's a done deal. Um, their favorite getaway place. <clears throat> I think home. I think any place that they get to be together and that is quiet and gives them just a little slice of time where each of them is entirely present with the other. Speaking as a guy who's been married a long time, um, those moments when I get to be with my spouse amidst the hurly-burly bustle and tension of the world are, are precious. And I think for Lois and for Clark, 
they live such lives of urgency. Um, there is always something that has to be done. There is always someone in need for both of them that being able to steal time with one another, uh, it, it, it's rare and it's very precious. So I, I think that that's, that's crucial. As to what I think annoys Lois most about her husband, um, you know, you, you, she knows, she knows who she married. Um, and one of my favorite little bits is actually, I think in issue 10, it's when Lois is, uh, holed up to do her writing. She is, she is working and she's also baiting the trap for the kiss. And, uh, Superman stops by to check on her. And they're having a conversation, and, and three or four times during the course of the conversation, literally in the middle of a word, Superman will be like, hold on, and off he goes. And, you know, we do that with Perkins does these beautiful panels of, you know, Lois's hair getting blown as he goes out, and then he comes back in. And by the third time it happens, she doesn't even pause, right? She just waits for him to come back and then finishes the sentence and finishes the thought. And I think 99% of the time she is fine with that. Because like I said, she knows who she married. And Lois is never going to say, you know, my discussion with you about X at this moment is more urgent than you saving the life of that person who is throwing themselves off of a bridge. Right? She's not ever going to do that. But I do think that every so often she kind of wishes that he wasn't always on duty. I think Lois worries a lot about his self-care. I think she, and, and I thought Brian actually touched on this rather beautifully, um, the idea that he doesn't sleep enough, that he doesn't rest enough. And that she has to tell him, it's okay to sit down, right? It, 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 it's all right to take a few moments for yourself. Um, yeah, that's my answer. And last question is, with all your years of experience in the comic book industry, what is the biggest change you have seen? And where do you see the industry heading in the future? Um... The biggest change has been in the inclusivity of the industry as a whole. And I mean that top to bottom. I am talking about uh, in the stories we are telling, certainly in the American market, in the ways we can tell the story digitally, web, in print. And crucially, the people who are telling the stories, the writers, the artists, the creators, the editorial staff. We are, we are finally seeing, I think, um, an industry that reflects our world a little more. Uh, we ain't there yet. Uh, it is, like so many things, a journey. And we are still in early stages. And we need to be reminded how far we have to go. But my, my better half, uh, Jennifer Van Meter, who was also a writer, is fond of saying that, you know, 20 years ago when we got into the industry and you'd go to a convention, there wasn't a line for the ladies' room. Um, and, you know, should we in a post-pandemic pandemic world get to return to comics conventions, there will be lines again. I think that's great. Um, art, and look, comics are entertainment, but their art needs to reflect the world. So you can be talking about, you know, giant space squids or whatnot, but anything you are, anything, any story you are telling in some way reflects the world around you. And the industry's slow but steady progress towards that, and it has been very slow at times, is a good thing. I absolutely believe that. Now, as to the future of the industry, God only knows. Um, I mean, God only knows. I, I, I do not believe comics will ever go extinct. I just, I can't, <clears throat> I can't accept it. In the same way that, you know, 
people cried that radio was the death of books and that television was the death of radio and CDs were the death of, you know, LPs and, 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 and streaming services now are, are, are the death of all music or whatnot. The, we want these stories and comics cannot be replicated in any other media. You can adapt, you can try to translate, but there are certain stories that will only ever be able to be told in a comic format. So the, the form is going to stay with us. The, the industry will change because the industry is driven by one thing and one thing only, and that thing is greed. Yeah, these, these the Publishers aren't in and out of the goodness of their heart, and they're in it to make a buck. Now, they may want to make a buck doing good works, but, you know, certainly the Marvels and DCs of the world, uh, the bottom line is what counts to the boards. But at the end of the day, people are still going to be making the funny books. And you don't tell a story, you don't make a comic if you don't want to share it with others. So I, I don't know what's going to happen to the industry as a whole, but I have an absolute, perhaps naive faith that, yeah, comics are with us and they're going to stay. The means of getting them and the people who make them, that may change. But comics ain't going anywhere. We're going to have them. So if that's a concern, you can rest easy. Guys, what do you think of those questions and answers? I thought Greg's answers were absolutely awesome and that's why we wanted to share those questions with, the, with you and also just thank Greg one more time. Greg, thank you so much. Yes, thank you very much, Greg. And if you enjoyed those and want to continue to win free stuff, which who doesn't, duh, then you need to be watching our live stream every Friday night, 10 p.m. Eastern Standard Time so you can gain entries and join us in our end of the month giveaway which hopefully will continue to have amazing creators and amazing questions and tons of fun because we're just we're fun people so now this beers this obviously gonna be a good time <laughs> but yeah what do you guys think hope you guys enjoyed this video if you're not subscribed to the channel um subscribe and you know if you're not hitting that bell then how will you know when we upload new content or when we go live on Fridays it's an easy reminder for you guys and also smash that like button. Thanks guys, and we'll see you guys in the next one. Peace.